A judge puts a stop to a merger between two low-cost airlines that could impact travel in the future. There are new welcome offers on Hyatt cards, and I've got a story today related around Valentine's Day. Yes, it is coming up in just a few weeks. And is it really the thought that counts when you give a gift for Valentine's? Or should you consider the money spent as well? That and much more on this week's edition of the Weekly Pointers News Update. I'm Brandon Boyd with The Brandon Boyd Show. Thank you so much for watching. I've been traveling a lot over the last six weeks. There's no doubt about it. I try to get these videos out every Sunday evening. And my goal is to catch you up on all the news you may have missed regarding credit cards, points and miles, travel money, finance, and everything in between. Super simple to follow along. On one side of the screen, you'll see a list of topics with a timer down below and timestamps down in the description below if you do find this video helpful or mildly entertaining. Don't forget to be awesome. Give me a big thumbs up on the video and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notifications for alerts and keep in mind if you're interested in any of the cards mentioned in today's video or you're interested in applying for your next credit card very soon, make sure you use my referral link down in the description below. When you apply through that referral link, it greatly helps support the channel, and I can't thank you all enough for doing that so far. We've got a really big show this week. I'm excited to share these stories with you, including a really big deal from a restaurant you've probably heard of to make it easier to dine and save money every single week of the year in 2024. I'll share that at the end, but if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get going. Now, first of all, I've got to start out with some news that came out several days ago, but it's something I haven't been able to talk about on the channel quite yet, and it revolves around the Capital One Venture X card. Now, I've put out several videos on my channel about the Capital One Venture X card, and a lot of those circulated around the time that the card came out, but as we all know, things have changed dramatically with that card in terms of the benefits since card launch. So since the launch of the card, Capital One has focused on maintaining the annual fee, but instead of increasing that annual fee, they have decided to just trim back more and more benefits as time goes along. And now there's another benefit that's been added to that list of it's out of here. So last year we saw the bank remove access to Priority Pass Restaurant and they devalued the card's $300 travel credit. And now we have learned that the next benefit to go is going to be complimentary Hertz President Circle status. And this is a pretty big deal because with Hertz President Circle status, you get perks like a guaranteed vehicle upgrade, access to Hertz Ultimate Choice Lot, and much more. And now that benefit will be going away at the end of 2024. So this raises a very interesting question that I think is going to come up amongst other cards in the future. And we need to decide what is the best way to move forward? Are you in favor of Capital One keeping the annual fee where it is and not increasing it, but slowly removing benefits? Or would you rather Capital One increase the annual fee a little bit and keep the benefits that were originally offered? I'm curious to hear what you have to say about this. I do not like it when you sign up for a card assuming certain benefits and they continually get worse. I mean, they're not even changing the benefit here. They're just making it worse by removing it all together. So I don't like this. I'm not a fan of it. Let me know your thoughts on this change down in the comments below. All right, all of you know that I'm a big fan of the World of Hyatt program. I've got a World of Hyatt card through Chase. And now there are new welcome offers for the World of Hyatt personal and business card from Chase. So right now in the personal world of Hyatt card, Chase is offering up to 65,000 points. And this is broken down into 35,000 bonus points after you spend $3,000 on purchases in your first three months from account opening. And then you can earn an additional 30,000 more bonus points by earning two bonus points total per $1 spent in the first six months. So that means in order to get that extra 30,000 points, you have to have $15,000 in spend. This card has an annual fee of $95, but it comes with a free night certificate at your card anniversary year, which is really exciting. I really like this card. It's a low annual fee. You can earn free night certificates. You can get tier qualifying nights by doing spend on this card. I'm a big fan of this one. Now shifting over to the World of Hyatt business card. So in the World of Hyatt business card, you can earn 60,000 bonus points after you spend $5,000 on purchases within the first three months. And then you can earn an additional 15,000 bonus points after you spend $12,000 within the first six months of account opening. Now this offer does end on March 6, 2024. It's important to mention that the business card does not come with a free night certificate, although it does have a significantly higher annual fee than the personal card, which still blows my mind. I do not understand that at all. 
but these offers are pretty good. If you're interested in the world of Hyatt card, now may be a good time to pick one of these up. This is a card that I spend on all year long to get tier qualifying nights, to get free night certificates, and to get status with World of Hyatt. I'm a huge fan of the program. I love it. Let me know if you have the World of Hyatt card, either the personal or the business card. How do you choose to use it? Do you recommend it to other people? I like it, at least the personal card. Let me know your thoughts down below. So a couple of weeks ago, we showed dramatic video of the Alaska Airlines flight that basically had a door blow open mid-flight and that led to the grounding of all 737 MAX 9 planes. It's a pretty big deal and all these planes are still grounded as of today. So the Federal Aviation Administration said Wednesday it had begun reviewing data for the first round of inspections on the grounded 737 MAX 9 planes. There's about 171 of those, so that definitely leads to some changes in flight plans. So make sure that if you have flight plans right now that you take a look at this and see if it's being impacted. These 737 MAX planes have had issues and I'm concerned in the long haul they're just not going to have to revamp these planes. They're probably going to try to modify these things to keep them going, to keep them safe instead of rebuilding these and just throwing these to the scrapyard if it were my guess. But long story short for you, this means that you need to check your travel plans and ensure that your flights are still going to be moving on time with these planes being grounded. Hopefully this gets resolved soon one way or another. Hopefully it's with safety in mind first and not with money because we know that businesses and government never make decisions based on money alone, right? Anyway, let me know your thoughts. The merger between Spirit and JetBlue, two low cost airliners, looks like it is going to be blocked. So a judge has blocked the Spirit JetBlue merger after an antitrust challenge by the Department of Justice. So JetBlue had proposed a $3.8 billion purchase of Spirit, but the Department of Justice said that the deal was anti-competitive and would be bad for cost-conscious travelers that rely on Spirit's low cost. In my personal opinion, again, just my opinion, I think this is not a bad idea because the less competition there is in the marketplace, the less incentive companies have to compete against each other and drive down costs. So if these two low cost providers do merge together, it does raise some concern about what other competitors are gonna be able to come along and keep those fares as low as they are right now. Now, are Spirit and JetBlue without their problems? Of course not, they are not without their problems, but it does make for less competition in the marketplace. In general, I'm not a big fan of that, but just keep an eye on this. Again, something that could affect travel in the future here. We'll have to see how this goes. What do you think about the judge's decision? Do you like that as of right now, at least today, it has been blocked and isn't able to move forward? Let me know your thoughts on things like this down in the comments below. And if you're familiar with the Weekly Pointers News Update, you know that each week I like to share a story as it relates to credit cards or money or finance and how those intertwine into personal relationships and it creates some very interesting stories that I like to share with you and get your opinion on who is right and who is wrong in these particular scenarios. This one revolves around Valentine's Day. Look, Valentine's Day is coming up in two or three weeks, somewhere around there. And this story revolves around, is it more important to get a gift that has thought put into it, or is it better to get a gift that has a dollar value assigned to it? A poster online has posted this question and I'm gonna read their story and let you make the decision. I'm gonna read this straight from the online poster. She says, I'm a female, 31, have been with my boyfriend, who is 37 years old, who's a single dad with two boys for two years. He has a decent job with decent income and is into woodworking as a hobby. For Valentine's days, birthdays, and every other celebration, he'd gift me mostly jewelry and I'd get him his favorite gadgets or sports gear. For this Valentine's, I got him sneakers. I found out today that his gift for me was a wooden framed photo of him, me, and the kids that he built together with the kids. I gotta say, I wasn't thrilled with it. When I told my boyfriend my honest opinion, I didn't want to open my mouth, but he pushed me. He said he couldn't believe this was my reaction. But I pointed out that he has money for a $200 necklace at least so I could wear it at the engagement party we're going to. But he said I was out of line to imply he was being cheap 
when all he was doing was to make me a special gift and also had the kids help with it and put so much thought and effort in it because they see me as family and I should be appreciative of that. I was, but still thought he could have added the necklace as a great combo, but he got even more mad saying he couldn't understand why I'd value a necklace as much as or even over a special gift he and the kids made for me. We went back and forth on this and breakfast got ruined. He went upstairs and refused to speak to me. I feel like he blew this out of proportion since he asked for my opinion and I don't know if he has the right to be upset with me now. All right, this is a very interesting story. It comes back to the age old question. Are gifts like Valentine's gifts or Christmas gifts or birthday gifts or any gifts for that matter, are they more geared around the thought that goes into them or is it about, hey, you're being really cheap. You may have thought about me, but you are really just trying to save money. I've got to know what you have to say about this. Have you been on the receiving end of a gift where you thought somebody was just trying to cheap out and say, oh, I was thinking about you. Here's something I got you that's really cheap. Would that upset you? Have you given a gift to someone where they have been less than thrilled or impressed with your gift, even though you put a lot of thought and effort into it? I love this story because it opens up a can of worms. I have my own opinion on this personally. I'm all about the thought that goes into the gift. If the kids especially went in on this with the dad and they worked in his woodworking shop building this amazing frame and put the picture in it, I think that's awesome. I would much more prefer that over a gift that was $100, $200, $500, whatever it is, but that's just my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong, I'm just one person. Let me know your thoughts on this down in the comments below. And as always on the Weekly Pointers News Update, I like to end the show with a really good food deal. And this week we've got a very interesting deal that is going to pay dividends all year long, but you'll have to act fast and on time to make sure you pick this one up. This one's coming from Applebee's. So Applebee's is offering something called Date Night Pass starting at noon on January 22nd. That's noon Eastern time. The pass costs $200 and gives a $30 credit every week for 52 weeks between February 1st, 2024 and January 31st, 2025. So passes will discount up to $30 of food and non-alcoholic beverages only per use and it cannot be used more than once within a 24 hour period. So in short, pay $200 for this pass, you'll get $30 off every time you go to Applebee's as long as your spend is in the regular like appetizer dinner categories. And their hope is that you're gonna come in and spend way more than that because every time you come in and spend at least $30, you will get $30 off. So it's a way for them to get more traffic in, maybe invite more friends and family to go out with you. Your friends may be wondering why you wanna to go to Applebee's every single weekend. Your partner, spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend may also be wondering why you wanna to go to Applebee's every weekend. Just tell them that you wanna take them to a place that's really special, especially some place that saves you $30 every time you go in at least once a week, which is really cool. So let me know what your thoughts are on this promotion, especially since it's called the Date Night Pass. Could you date somebody for an entire year taking them to Applebee's? I don't know, I would be pretty happy with that. $30 off, free food, count me in. Well, this has been a very fun episode. We talked about new credit card offers from Chase with the World of Hyatt cards. We talked about the merger with Spirit and JetBlue. And we had that very interesting story about the Valentine's Day gift. I can't wait to hear your all's feedback on that. And keep in mind, if you're interested in any cards mentioned in today's video or any card for that matter, make sure you apply using my referral link down in the description below. And when you apply using that referral link, you are showing your support for this channel. And I greatly appreciate all of your support so far. If you found this video helpful or mildly entertaining, don't forget to be awesome. Give me a big thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notifications for alerts. And when you click on the Brandon Boyd Show, click, click, click. You're gonna get the latest information on credit cards, points and miles, travel money, finance, free Applebee's and everything in between. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. We'll see you soon.